This is a poem I love. It's a celebration of the beauty of a disciplined skill in action. And it was something I, I read often, actually, at the time that I decided to change careers and train in medicine, although I never had an ambition to be a surgeon and was in any case much too old to take on such a demanding career path. Anyway, here it is. It's called A Correct Compassion by James Kirkup, and it's subtitled to Mr. Philip Allison after watching him perform a mitral stenosis valvulotomy in the general infirmary at Leeds. Cleanly, sir, you went to the core of the matter. Using the purest kind of wit, a balance of belief and art, you, with a curious nervous elegance, laid bare the root of life and put your finger on its beating heart. The glistening theatre swarms with eyes and hands and eyes. On green clothed tables, ranks of instruments transmit a sterile gleam. The masks are on, and no unnecessary smile betrays a certain tension, true concomitant of calm. Here we communicate by looks, though words too are used, as in continuous historic present you describe our observations and your deeds. All gesture is reduced to its result, an instrument. She who does not know she is a patient lies within a tent of green and sleeps without a sound beneath the lamps and the reflectors that devise illuminations probing the profoundest wound. A calligraphic master improvising, you invent the first incision and no poet's hesitation before his snow-blank page mars your intent. The flowing stroke is drawn like an uncalculated inspiration. A garland of flowers unfurls across the painted flesh. With quick precision, the arterial forceps click. Yellow threads are knotted with a simple flourish. Transfused, the blood preserves its rose, though it is sick. Meters record the blood, measure heartbeats, control the breath. Hieratic gesture, scalpel bears a creamy rib. With pincer and knives, the bone quietly is clipped and lifted out. Beneath, the pink, black mottled lung, like a revolted creature, heaves, collapses, as if by extra fingers is neatly held aside by two ordinary egg beaters, kitchen tools that curve like extraordinary hands. Heart laid bare, silently beats. It can hide no longer, yet is not revealed. A local anaesthetic in the cardiac nerve. Now, in the firm hands that quiver with a careful strength, your knife peels through the heart's transparent skin. At first, inside the pericardium, slit down half its length, the heart, black-veined, swells like a fruit about to burst, but goes on beating, love's poignant image bleeding at the darts of a more grievous passion, as a bird, dreaming of flight, sleeps on within its leafy cage. It generally upsets the heart a bit, though not unduly when I make the first injection. Still, still the patient sleeps, and still the speaking heart is dumb. The watchers breathe an air far sweeter, rarer than the rooms. The cold walls listen, each in his own blood hears the drum she hears, tented in green, unfathomable calms. I make a purse-string suture here, with a reserve suture, which I must make first and deeper, as a safeguard, should the other burst. In the cardiac nerve, I inject again a local anaesthetic. Could we have fresh towels to cover all these adventitious ones? Now, can you all see? When I put my finger inside the valve, there may be a lot of blood and it may come with quite a bang, but I let it flow in case there are any clots to give the heart a good clean out. Now can you give me every bit of light you've got? We stand on the benches, peering over his shoulder. 
The lamp's intensest rays are concentrated on an inmost heart. Someone coughs. If you have to cough, you will do it outside this theatre. Yes, sir. How is she breathing, Doug? Do you feel quite happy? Yes, fairly happy. Now I'm putting my finger in the opening of the valve. I can only get the tip of my finger in. It's gradually giving way. I'm inside. No clots. I can feel the valve breathing freely now around my finger and the heart working. Not too much blood. It opened up very nicely. I should say that anatomically speaking, this is a perfect case. Anatomically. For of course, anatomy is not physiology. We find we breathe again and hear the surgeon hum. Outside in the street, a car starts up. The heart regularly thunders. I do not stitch up the pericardium. It is not necessary. For this is imagination's other place, where only necessary things are done, with the supreme and grave dexterity that ignores technique, with proper grace in forming a correct compassion that performs it love and makes it live.